Hey friends and family, it's Linda, RV Dweller Travels. Hey, today I'm visiting Fort Pickens in Pensacola, Florida. So come on along and let's check it out together. to extinguish any sparks. During Pensacola's turbulent colonial period, both Spain and Great Britain had built fortifications at Pensacola, but these earlier efforts had been concentrated on the mainland. The American plan called for a series of four forts, two to be built on the low-lying islands that formed the entrance to the bay, and one on either side of the peninsula where the navy yard was to be built. This would be the most elaborate defensive scheme yet seen at Pensacola, and for the first time it was recognized that the key point in the entire plan would be not on the mainland but on islands. Fort Pickens would be the largest of the four forts and the first to be built. Appointed to supervise the project, Captain William Henry Chase began stockpiling construction materials on Santa Rosa Island 
during the spring of 1829. Since the fort would be the main defense for the only U.S. Navy yard on the Gulf of Mexico, it was built on a grand scale. The plans called for a five-sided fort with a bastion at each corner. An outer wall, the counter scarp, protected the side of the fort facing the island, while four sides faced the water. Gun emplacements able to bring over 100 cannon to bear on the channel into the bay were mounted both within and on top of the walls. Also within the walls were 13 quarters for troops, three storerooms for powder, and two cisterns for the water supply. The walls enclosed a parade ground covering seven acres. The government would eventually purchase well over 20 million br bricks for the Fort Pickens. As boats brought loads of brick to the island, an officer would carefully inspect the size and quality of the bricks before accepting them for purchase. In addition to the millions of bricks, the project required many materials from distant sources. Almost 26,000 casks of lime, mostly from quarries at Thomastown, Maine, would be used for mortar in the brickwork. The fort's first garrison did not stay long. Coastal forts were built to provide a defense which did not require much manpower to maintain. Once completed, the forts were entrusted to small caretaker units for maintenance, with full garrisons present only in times of national crises. One such period was during the Texas Revolution and the war with Mexico. Another such crisis was the Civil War from 1861 to 1865. The last artillerymen left Fort Pickens in 1947. The combined factors of improved military tactics, the use of guided missiles, and the invention of atomic weapons all worked against the concept of coastal defense. The coast artillery would be disbanded by 1950. An era had ended. During 118 years of service, Fort Pickens served as a Union bastion deep in the Confederacy, as a prison for Confederates, and later, Apaches, and as a support facility for more modern defenses. The fort suffered tremendously during this service. Well, there's my visit to Fort Pickens. If you happen to be in the Pensacola, Florida area and you have some time on your hand, please do stop and take a tour of this incredible, incredible garrison. Pensacola Bay is on one side and of course, Gulf of Mexico on the other. The beauty of the water, the sunsets, the sunrises make it all worthwhile. Well, thank you, as always, for watching my videos. Please don't forget, like, share, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget, ring that notification bell, and you'll be notified when I upload my next video. Thanks so much. Be blessed.